On September 22, 1958, a Lockheed TV-2 Sea Star crashed into the desert in Southern California after it suffered some type of engine failure. Both pilots, Lieutenant A.H. Gonzalez and student Lieutenant H.C. Quitmeyer, were able to eject with only minor injuries. Their plane was lost somewhere in the Southern California desert mountains. Hi, I'm Bill Berry and welcome to my desert adventures. This is one of the first times that I was very anxious about going out into the desert and doing a search for anything. I think the reason was we discovered the location of this ancient wreck which crashed in 1958 through a search via Google Earth and it crashed in an area of the Southern California mountains that were extremely rugged. We knew that there was a canyon we could walk through to at least get to an area where we'd have to make an incredibly steep climb up through rocks with no trail. My friend Robert Marcus and I loaded up our gear and headed up the mountain in an attempt to find this lost plane. How heavy is that pack there, it Bill? It feels heavy. What's well, like 40 got, pounds? I've got five bottles of water. You look like uh, a Marine. Yeah. Got a little breeze. Yeah. Five, 10 mile an hour. It's nice out though. What's it, about 63? I would say it's about 63 degrees, yep. About four feet in front of you is not solid. This one? Yeah. Good job. Excellent. <clears throat> so, we're coming to the ridge where we're going to make the turn to go up the hill. You know, Robert, this isn't anything like I expected, the way Google Earth looked. It's just always so deceiving. Look how damn steep this is, man. Bill's got a real heavy backpack, and he said it's been pulling him backwards, which is what those Army-style packs tend to do, because look at that weight behind you. Well, I'm carrying all of your water. Ah, <laughs> Bill and I are here on this little perch. And look what we've just come up, about 500 feet of bouldering. But that's the price to pay when you want to find a historic, complete, air, complete air wreck. So, we just came over the summit of the steep canyon, and there's one more little canyon to go on the other side in front of us. And Robert looked down and he goes, what's this? And it's a large predator track. We know it's not human. And the only large predator, it's old enough that it doesn't have a lot of definition, but it's big enough that it's it, and wide enough that it's not a sheep. And so I'm pretty sure we're looking at a mountain lion track here. And we know there's mountain lions up here because we saw a lamb's leg laying on the ground on our way up. Okay, this is pretty exciting because after about two plus hours, we finally came across the first piece of wreckage of the U.S. Navy TV-2, which you could also call a U.S. Air Force T-33. It's the same aircraft. This looks to be a, uh, a regulator, uh, probably for uh, gas or hydraulics. And it says in, and it says out, right there. This is quite heavy. So this technology is from 1948. This weighs about four pounds. So you know they didn't have a lot of uh, alloys, advanced alloys in, in that time. Here's another big piece, very big and heavy. I can see the plane up there, Robert. We're a long ways from it. All right, Bill and I have just reached the crash site after about two hours, 20 minutes. It's been quite a haul. Because of the remote location, this is one of the most complete wreck sites we've ever seen. Almost all of the plane is visible here. 
but you really don't recognize anything except that one big section with the jet engine and the vertical stabilizer. We only spent about an hour at the wreck site. It was a long way back and we didn't want to get caught in the dark or in the rain. But in that hour we were certainly able to see a lot of that plane. We got to see the fuel tanks, uh, part of the cockpit. Uh, we were able to see the landing gear and many other different components that made up this jet airplane. This was the first operational jet that the U.S. military ever flew. And uh, it was used as a trainer by the Navy and the Air Force for a long time. So we're going to carefully walk. Here's another uh, electronic component. There's no telling what it, what it did. But everything's sharp as hell, of course. Uh, thank God it's cold enough that there's not going to be any rattlesnakes or anything out here today. But look at this blower. Some kind of heater. It says GW65520858. Here's a couple instruments from the cockpit that Bill called my attention to. We don't know what they are because the glass is falling off and it doesn't say anymore, but you can imagine it might say oil pressure, altimeter. So here's a little view of the cockpit and that would be what the pilot was looking out when he was flying the plane. There were two guys on board, both ejected and uh, landed with minor injuries. The most impressive part of this crash site was that large section which included the jet engine, the vertical stabilizer, and the horizontal stabilizers. Robert pointed out the details on the rear part of the airplane that was so visible to us, and is really from a distance was the first thing we saw besides those two parts we found in the sand. The two external fuel tanks that were attached to the wings were also clearly visible and pretty much intact. There was no sign of fire, so the pilots either dumped all of the fuel, or when the plane hit, because the engine had flamed out and was not on, no fire was ignited. So typically in the Navy, the aircraft would have beefier landing gear so they can take off and land from aircraft carriers, and that involves a lot of stress on the aircraft. And this looks pretty, pretty damn strong. These are the brakes yeah. right here. Here's where the, I suppose the tire was. Yeah. The tire is long gone. But look at that beautiful Incredible. cylinder, yeah. pneumatic cylinder. Bill just pointed something out. This is the remains of the tire, and it doesn't look like a tire because it's just the steel belt. The rubber is all eroded away, and this may have been where the rubber was, and yeah. possibly. That's trippy. The skies were getting dark. Yeah, it's going to start to rain on us, Bill. I think we might want to get our stuff together and ski daddle. It was definitely time to head back. We were pretty tired. As a matter of fact, we couldn't walk fast anymore. But Mother Nature rewarded us for all of our efforts. What a beautiful day. What once was lost is now found. We found the TV2. It was really worth the effort. And I'm sure it'll remain there for many other people to see if they have the fortitude to make that hike.